and taking you to break. One, one of the more entertaining baseball games we've seen this season in the hometown Reds came out on top. Let's take you back to those highlights. Let's start it off with our Toyota tough play for tough trucks. It happened in the first. Jim Edmonds at the dish. Now, how many times have we seen Edmonds take away hits or home runs from players? How about Ryan Friel getting it done? He kind of misjudged the ball, got turned around, but got acclimated and made the catch up against the wall. Starting pitcher John Bale says, thank you very much. Nicely done. That was the best catch of the game for one inning in the second. Kelly Stinnett crushes one to right center. Look at Edmonds use the wall as he goes up and steals a homer from the Reds catcher. Russell Brannion first hit back from the disabled list and a big one. It was a solo shot. It tied the game at one. The Cardinals pulled back in front 2-1, but in the bottom of the sixth, the Reds came up with a big five-run inning. First, Sean Casey singled to right, scored D'Angelo Jimenez to tie the game. Sixth inning, one of those new names again, Tim Hobble, his first RBI as a major leaguer. Two-run score here, 5-2 to two Red Legs. It was 6-2 Reds going to the seventh when Scott Rowland took care of most of that deficit. A three-run home run off John Reedling. Not a very nice birthday present for the birthday boy Reedling. The Cardinals back to within one at 6-5. D'Angelo Jimenez, we've talked about him, and here he is producing again. Another solo home run, this one to left field, 7-5 Cincinnati. The Reds put the lead in the hands of Danny Graves, back in the bullpen for the first time since coming out of the starting rotation. He was terrific, two scoreless innings, striking out Eduardo, son of Tony Perez, to end the ball game. Five runs, 13 hits, no errors for the Cardinals. Eight runs, 10 hits, no errors for the Reds. The winning pitcher was John Bale, his first win with the Reds. The Reds overcame a good night by Scott Rowland. Still to come on this edition of Real Red. Win 11-6. What about the Cardinals? Well, could they say tie with the ass? Astros in the Central on top of it. Jim Edmonds against the Reds this year. 200 batting average, three homers, nine RBIs. You know, Edmonds is not much of a stat guy. Two-run home run. For Edmonds, two for four in this game, four RBIs, number 34 on the year. He also had his 31st double. Let's flash back. Remember, it was a long time ago. It was Friday. Against these Reds, Jim Edmonds doing his thing in the outfield, just robbing another guy of a homer. So what happened Saturday against Russell Brannion facing Brett Tomka with a man on? This. You know, Edmonds could be a gangster because he just committed another robbery. Oh, you've been watching the MTV Awards. I'm telling you, you know. It's a good show, isn't it, Russell Brennan? Cards win, stay on top of the central. Classic matchup, intersectional variety, sort of fact. Have your results a little later in the show. Welcome back. Another statistical anomaly for the Reds. Today's starting eight had combined for 31 home runs and 113 RBI entering the season uh, series finale with the Cardinals. St. Louis superstar Albert Pujols has 35 home runs and 109 RBI all by himself. He's hitting 367 as well. Oh, and he added to those numbers today. Let's go to Great American Ballpark. Jim Edmonds on the bench getting some well-deserved rest. Perhaps Edgar Renteria could have used his glove. Misplays Willie Mopena's floater in the fifth. Puts runners at the corners with one out. But after a sacrifice bunt, Sterling Hitchcock strikes out Ryan Friel. Hitchcock with four Ks today. Now top six, one on. Albert Pujols, oh, crushes the 88 mile per hour offering from Danny Serafini to deep center field, 477 feet. Check it out again, right at the belt, goes off the top of the batter's eye and actually reaches the concourse. First time ever, we're told, that's happened at the new ballpark. Hitchcock in just the second start of the season was Sterling. Three hits, one walk, and six shutout innings. More pool holds in the eight. Two on off Danny Graves. Yanks this one, a line drive for his 38th homer. 114 RBI now in the season. Cards take over first in the Central with the 5 to nothing win. Yeah, it went from the, from the Edmund show to the pool hold show today. Um, I'll tell you what, the ball he hit off gravy. I don't, it was about two feet off the ground, and probably most hitters, it, if they swing at it, it's a double play ball. When I threw it, I thought it was a pretty good pitch. You know, obviously that situation, trying to get a double play, and like I said, that's the best singer I've thrown in a long time, and he just went down after it and got it, and he smoked it, but uh, you can't do anything about it. That's, that, all you can say is that he's that good. Yes, he is that good. Following this afternoon's game, the Reds trade Kelly Stanett to the Phillies in exchange for a player to be named later. The 10-year catcher hit 229 with three homers, 19 RBI, and 60 games this season. The move saves money for the Reds. Stanett earns $1.3 million this season, had a mutual option next year at seven hundred fifty grand. You know, I made the playoffs in 99 with Arizona, so, uh, you know, it's uh, obviously something to play for. You know, and I'm not saying there's nothing here, but... Uh, 
you know, you're playing for, you know, the town of Philadelphia now and, and, and all the guys over there seem like a great bunch of guys. So, uh, you know, hopefully it'll be fun. First baseman Sean Casey has survived the organization's cost-cutting measures and with Stanette's departure is one of just four players who has been with the team all season. Despite solid numbers on the field, it's been a difficult year. I went one-on-one -on -one with Casey to talk about the tumultuous season, starting with Stanette's farewell. Seeing Kelly go, and it's just, it's tough. It gets, it's tough seeing guys go because it, it's more than just baseball players. You know, so us and here, they're, they're friends and teammates and guys you've gone to war with for for years now and, and played with, and you've gotten to know their families and things. That that makes it that makes it that makes it a little tough. And I would think after all the trades so far, you think when is it going to end? Mm -hmm. And here Kelly leaves today. Right. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, like you said, I mean, they're. Uh, Obviously, trying to get in a direction where they can bring payroll down and get some good, good quality young players and, 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 and move in that direction. So, I mean, hopefully that, that pans out where we're getting a lot of good young players and, like, you know, the harangues and Clausens and, you know, this Tim Hummel. And you know, some, there, there's some good players, that, the young guys here that, you know, hopefully can help us out in the next few years so we can get back to uh, you know, winning baseball games. Does it make you think when is Sean Casey going to be traded? Or did you think when Aaron Boone left and Williamson yeah. and all those guys that you would be in there too? Well, you know, I think when it was all happening, everyone thought they were, you know, on the block. So at the that, that time, I thought, you know, I might, might be one of those guys too. And, and now that I haven't left, I'm, you know, I'm glad I'm here. I love Cincinnati, you know. And it's just definitely been a, a, a different year. Uh, emotionally, but a different year uh, as far as just looking around and seeing so many new faces in the clubhouse. But uh, yeah, I love it here in Cincinnati, and hopefully, uh, you know, we're going the right direction where we can keep payroll down and, and, and get a lot of young guys in here that are, that are studs and, and uh, you know, do something hopefully that Oakland's doing. Does it make you think, Case, of the year that could have been brand new ballpark? I mean, for years we've been hearing all the talk about building for this place. Yeah. Coming in here, getting it all together, and it just seems yeah. like everything was torn down. Yeah, I think the toughest part was that we, we weren't too far away. We were right, we were close. And uh, we were close this year. I mean, we were right there most of the year, right, hanging around two games, three games back, and then we just kind of hit a stretch where we didn't do well. And uh, so f for that, it's discouraging just from a player's point of view that we didn't get the job done and we weren't able to keep this team together because there were just so many good guys in here. And that's been that's been tough. And as you say, the young guys around here, it seems like you're the old man around here <laughs> yeah. now. How was it? How has this year helped you grow up? How has it helped you to mature? Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely been an entering year. Yeah, yeah, I've become like the old old the wily vet in here. <laughs> that's <laughs> it's kind of funny. Face, yeah, 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 it's <laughs> unbelievable. But yeah, it's funny. I mean, I went from you know being the middle of the road vet to all of a sudden being the, being the big vet in the clubhouse. So uh, uh, it's definitely been a, you know role change too because there's a lot of so many young guys in here. You know. That haven't been through certain things, you know. Even off the field, some you know guys have questions. Hey, what do I do here? What do I do there? And you know, I, I, I 